In this video, I'm going to discuss the accounting for natural resources and consequently the idea of depletion, which parallels uh, the concept of depreciation, except that when we talk about natural resources and the extraction of natural resources, we call it depletion. <clears throat> the idea is very similar to when we discussed uh, depreciation for property plant equipment. This is that video where I explained to you that what we're doing is we're trying to find a way to allocate the cost in a systematic and rational manner to the periods that benefit. So here, when we talk about depletion of natural resources, it's the same thing. We're looking for a systematic way to uh, get those costs out to expense in the periods that benefit for that. In the case of natural resources, usually the method that we use is the activity method, uh, like a units of production method, where we, as we extract, we deplete the natural resource. And I'll explain that a little better in a minute. So the first thing is, what am I allowed to capitalize as part of the natural resource? So think about it. You buy the rights to some land to extract some minerals and what are you allowed to capitalize? First thing is the acquisition cost. And these are the costs involved for you to have the right to explore that land. So whatever you, those costs are, you are allowed to capitalize and put as part of the depletion, uh, depletion base. Next, once you have the rights to explore, all the costs involved in exploring the uh, natural resource can also be capitalized. And, uh, you know, the, so these are significant costs a lot of times, right? And if at some point in time we figure out that there is nothing there, you know, think about exploring for oil. If you are exploring for oil and, you, and the well that you're uh, exploring is not successful, then at, at that point, you'll have to write that off, okay? Those costs that you incurred. But initially, you can capitalize them. Assuming something is found... Okay, then we go into the development of that land so that we can extract the resources. So whatever costs are involved there, we can also capitalize as part of the natural resource. And you do want to distinguish here something. If you have tangible assets that are not unique to that site, so in other words, you have trucks, you have a whole bunch of machinery that is used at that uh, particular uh, uh, place that you're exploring, exploring, then those separate tangible assets will have their own regular depreciation as property, plan, and equipment. What we are talking about here are costs that are involved for this particular project. So you might have some intangible costs that are, are directly involved with the extraction of that uh, resource. So those are the ones that you can capitalize for the depletion base. And then finally, if after the useful life or the extraction life, however you want to call it, you have to do some restoration to the land after you've explored and you've uh, extracted, then you would have to include that as a cost as well uh, to be depleted. And that deals with the concept of asset retirement obligations. This amount is, all of these are current costs, A through C, but this particular amount is a future cost. So the way we would include that in the cost of the depletion basis, we would get the present value of what we expect to pay out in the future to restore the land or, or whatever it is that we're dealing with. Okay, so keep that in mind. This, these costs you're actually paying, so cash is going out. This one you're not going to be paying until the future, so you're going to have a liability related to this one. And you will value that long-term liability at the present of value of future cash flows. So whatever the present value of that future outflow is, it gets included as part of the depre uh, depletion base here. Just a little side note here. In terms of how to do the accounting, I explained to you that um, when we are doing the exploration, when we incur the exploration costs, we capitalize them and then we write it up and down if the exploration ends up being unsuccessful. There is a particular... Uh, um, way that the oil and gas industry deals with this, the exploration costs. 
okay? And one, of, one option is what they call the successful efforts method, where you capitalize only successful explorations. In other words, anything that is unsuccessful, you simply expense. And only when you find successful wells, then you capitalize those exploration costs. That's one option. Or the other option is you do the full cost method in which you capitalize all exploration costs from all wells, both the successful ones and the unsuccessful ones. And there's rationale for both. For example, here, you know, the rationale is part of finding successful wells is going to involve exploring unsuccessful ones. So all those costs should be part of the depletion base. That's one argument. And usually the smaller uh, operators use this method. Whereas with the successful efforts method, you know, you can kind of think about how easy we can rationalize this one. If you have, if you're exploring something and it's unsuccessful, then it's just an expense, right? Uh, so we would only capitalize the successful uh, exploration efforts. Just an industry uh, specific uh, issue here that I wanted to bring to light with exploration costs. All right, so let's look at some of the valuation that is done here in terms of depletion, just so you uh, can see. So we, we gather these costs, A through D, we sum them up, and we have the depletion base. So from the depletion base, let me write that down maybe, we divide it by the expected units, and then we have a depletion per unit. Okay, so let's think about this. This will be the formula. So depletion base, we said, is you know, A through D above. Then we have some expectation as to how many units, how many tons, etc. we're going to extract from this uh, natural resource. So that gives us naturally a cost per unit of extraction, hence the activity method, the units of production method that I mentioned earlier. So normally what happens is this this is normally what you'll find okay so normally you'll as you extract that natural resource you put the inventory as an x which is cost uh in in the books okay so you put the inventory at cost straightforward and you credit the accumulated depletion for that natural resource which little by little is going to be if this is a contra asset for the natural resource. So little by little, it's going to be reducing that natural resource asset. That's when extracted. And then when you sell it, then you remove that inventory that you uh, put in the books at the same cost. And then debit cost of goods sold like you would normally do for any transaction. And then you get to recognize that revenue at the cost plus the P here. I'm putting it as a profit. Uh, don't let the, you know, the X and P trick you here. This is just saying, look, hopefully we sell this at a higher amount than X, right? X being the cost. So I'm just throwing a, a profit in there. And assuming there's a profit, this is what we have. And you debit cash or accounts receivable for whatever it is for that same amount. And that's it. You know, you, you extract and you sell. That's how it is. Now, there is an exception that I think is worth mentioning and it applies especially in the area of natural resources. Instead of having to carry it at a cost, the exception allows you to carry that extraction at net realizable value. And recall that net realizable value is the selling price of that particular item minus any, uh, uh, any additional minimal cost that you'll have for maybe distribution or sales or something like that. But usually your NRV is, is, is kind of your sales price of the item minus a few other small costs. So when are you allowed to carry that inventory at NRV? There's some rules. If what you're extracting is traded in a control market where there are quoted prices for it, uh, if there are no significant additional disposal costs. In other words, once you extract it, there's a market out there ready to buy it. You're not gonna incur any additional costs, significant additional costs. And basically your product is ready to be sold. Then if those, if those three items are met, all three, 
then this allows you to carry the inventory at NRV from the moment that you extract it. Now you may be wondering why is that good or bad? Well, it, it allows you, if you carry that NRV, it allows you to immediately recognize that income, that profit from the item as you extract it. And the idea is simple. If you have something you're extracting, imagine, um, uh, what can I think of, like minerals, maybe some uh, minerals used to create batteries, lithium or something. Once you have extracted that lithium, there's a market out there ready to buy it. And if, if, you, if you can meet these three requirements, then you can immediately recognize that income on it. So in other words, your inventory is no longer going to be carried at cost only. It's going to be carried at cost plus that additional profit. And you'll take it out of, out of accumulated depreciation and you'll recognize that income immediately. Later on, and supposedly this happens very quickly because there's a market out there ready to buy it, you debit your cash for the X plus the profit, the full amount and that realizable value, and, the, and then you credit inventory for that same amount. The difference here is the timing of where you recognize that profit, uh, where the normal way to recognize it is you recognize the profit upon uh, selling it, okay? And the profit will be revenue minus cost of goods sold. That'll, that'll be on your income statement. And that happens at the point when you actually sell that natural resource. But if that exception applies, you're able to recognize that income, that profit immediately as you extract the the resource. So that may make a difference for your financial statements, right? If you have something that's already extracted and you can, you know, you, you meet the three criteria here, it'll just hit the PL, uh, the income statement, the profit and loss statement immediately as opposed to when you later sell it. But do keep in mind, this is the approach that normally is done right here. Okay, this concludes the video on uh, depletion and accounting for natural resources.